Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the calculations for the project that I showed in my previous video. I had a comment asking me how I did the load takedown for this project. And I think one of the biggest problems that some young engineers have is how do you visualize from a 2D plan where all the loads are acting on the new structure. I would never make a model like this for this kind of project, but for the sake of this video and to help visualize where all the loads and all the new structure is going, I think it would make it a lot clearer. Learning how to read 2D plans and visualizing in your head where all the new structure is going to go is a skill and it does take quite a lot of experience and practice to get right and to get efficient at it. Okay, so if you've been watching my channel and you've seen some of my previous calculations, this is a pretty standard setup for me for a very small little project. The introduction is a good place just to outline what the project is and list out any sort of assumptions which you've made. It's also a good place to describe what you're going to be designing or what you're going to be showing them in this document. I then like to list out the loadings which I've assumed and the loads which I'm going to be using within the project to do my designs. If you want a slower and more detailed breakdown on how I come up with these loads, go check out my load takedown video, I'll put a link in the description below. So now on to the load takedown. I did this very very quickly at the time so it's probably a little bit messier than I'd like but it does the job. I first start off by creating grid lines in both the X and the Y axis. The only loads which I need to work out are on grid lines B and grid lines 3. On grid line B we have the main structural steel frame and on grid line 3 we have two structural steel beams going into the main frame. The main frame beam is beam A and the other two beams are beams B and beam C. Beam B is forming a new opening within the existing wall and is also supporting masonry above it. Likewise with beam B, the existing wall is being removed and the beam is going to be supporting masonry above it. Beam C is there to form the new extension and like with the other beams there is a wall above it as well. So now we can actually do the load takedown. So first we have the dead load which is denoted by GK. Starting from the top we have the roof. So we calculated that the roof has a dead weight of 1.6 kN per meter squared and we know that the roof spans 6 meters across the whole width of the house. So we want to divide that 6 meters by 2 because the roof is going to be supported at either end. Next we also have the first floor of the existing house. This is basically exactly the same calculation as the roof except the dead weight is 0.85 and not 1.6. Next we have the new extension roof and that has a dead weight of 1.05 with a full span of 3 meters. So we want to divide that by 2. Then below that we have the new extension first floor and then we need to work out the load from the existing wall. Using the dead weight of the wall we worked out previously, all we need to do is multiply by the height of the existing wall, in this case 3 meters. Because I'm not going to be doing a 3D model, the best thing you can do is to draw your own sections. That way it's really obvious and clear what you're trying to calculate. And it will also be easier to make sure that you haven't actually missed anything. We repeat the same steps for the live load on grid line B. For the loads on grid line C, there is no roof load from the main roof or the first floor joist because the joists are spanning parallel with grid line 3. The only load we need to consider is the self weight of the wall it's supporting and also for the tiny little sort of balcony area on the outside. So before I go into the design or the analysis, I'd just like to make a quick statement about how I'm going to analyze it or what software I'm going to be using. And it's the same with design, I will normally write what software I'm going to be using for design. In this case, because I needed to design a moment frame, uh, I actually use robot analysis just to do it, mainly because it's for speed and it also has a steel connection module to it, which I use later on to design the moment connection. Whenever I use analysis software, I will put the most important output into the main structural calculations. That way it's really clear to the reader what forces I'm going to be using for the design. I'm not going to be going into the design of the steelwork in this video because it's all just Ted's output because I was doing it for speed. I'm not you know, trying to demonstrate my hand calculation knowledge to the client. Um, I'm working to a budget so I do want to do this in a timely and efficient way. Hopefully you found this short video useful and if you've got any further questions please drop me a comment below. 
As always, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.